Daniel, the other thing I just wanted to check, the uh, height of the charge point. Um, you know, I have to choose an appropriate place where it's going to sit there, you know, most flush on the on this yeah. stonework anyway. Yeah. Let's go to as high as you're allowed to go, and yeah. then I can tell my wife I've gone as high as we're legally allowed yeah. to go. Yeah, okay. Unboxing the charge point right now. And then the great thing about these Simpson & Partners charge points, and in particular the packaging, you've got the template, which is just uh, incorporated in, into the packaging itself. The customer has requested the charge point to be mounted um, a little a little bit higher just for ease of access. So I'm going to set it approximately between 1.3 and 1.4 metres to the top of the charge point and position it such that it sits really nicely on this beautiful Cotswold stone wall. So now that I've got my centre point on the wall itself, I'm going to just measure up the centre point on the template and then just pick an appropriate spot near to the desired height uh, top of the charge point just to ensure that the charge point sits nice and straight on the stone wall. It's important to make sure that the fixing holes will be made in a nice secure area of the wall. So now that I've got the template centred and level, it's time now to mark up the fixing points. Mark the top fixing holes, the centre lower fixing hole and in this case also the rear cable entry. So what I'm going to do is drill from outside here back into inside. I'll need to go at a bit of an angle uh, to come out somewhere in there and then we can bring the cable through. Okay. I've drilled a pilot hole, just put the cable rod through now just to check on the other side that I've come through where I expect to. I'm just going through with the next size drill bit, just to increase the width of the hole. checking that the holes that have been marked are nice and level. Okay, so and to unpack the rest of the box, I've got some important bits in here. The CT clamp, a USB-C cable, the mounting plate in this case, is for the wireless energy manager, compression gland and the washer kit for the fixing point. The charge point is secured together using security screws and do the fixing points on the underside of the charge point. These screws are captive so don't worry about losing them, they should stay in place. And then from here be able to lift the front fascia off and place it over to one side. Now the next stage is to remove the front flap for the Type 2 charge connector. There's two screws on the front plate, one on the underside. Again, this one here is a captive screw so it should stay in place. Lift the front plate up and towards the bottom of the charge point. And then finally, there's four remaining screws on the front plate. Again, using the same Torx driver, undo these screws and lift the front face plate up and away. It's a good idea to put these screws somewhere where they're not going to get lost, so I like to just tip them onto my, onto my workbench on the tub there. So you've got two options with cable entry to the Simpson & Partners charge point. You have rear entry at the back and also bottom entry on the underside of the charge point. 
There is also a small cutout here for any additional communications cable you might need. There is a 25 mil compression gland supplied with the installation kit. We're going to be coming through the back of the charge point. It's a good idea to drill from the outside of the charge point towards the inside just to avoid any of this debris from getting inside the charge point. So the lock ring goes on the back. You can see this recessed area on the back of the charge point which allows it to sit flat to the wall without this lock ring from obstructing the charge point. And then there is enough space to mount the compression gland on the inside of the charge point. Use a suitable tool to tighten this up correctly. With the compression gland in place, now it's the time to prepare the fixing screws. Prepare your own screws with the washers provided. It's important to use these washers as they have a rubber gasket mounted on the inside of the washer. This will help prevent any moisture ingress into the charge point. Ensure the screws are nice and tight. Ensure the compression gland is tight around the cable. Again, this will, will prevent any moisture ingress into the charge point. So here we're installing a single phase charge point and we're using a three core cable. So prepare the conductors accordingly. It's a good idea to leave a small amount of excess on the cables for any future retermination. Be sure to torque the terminals to the correct specification. Okay. So now it's time to put the front fascia on. And then next thing to do is to reassemble the flap. The best way I find to do this is to align the rubber gasket around the connection port first, just to make sure that that rubber seal sits nicely. If you push firmly up, you'll see that those fixing holes there will then align. Screw the front two screws in, and don't forget to fix the bolt on the underside. The last thing to do is slide the front fascia on. Use the notches on the side to guide the front fascia up and over the charge point. And make sure it's secured nicely into place. And then finally, tighten the remaining screws. This property here is powered by overhead power lines um, and is protected uh, by a 60 amp fuse. So this device here will wirelessly connect to the Simpson Partners charge point. Um, and in the event that an unsafe load is being drawn from the grid, um, which might exceed the value of the fuse that's uh, rated in this cutout here, uh, then it basically reduces the charge point down to a safe level. Uh, and then it will be able to return to its sort of full capacity this is a self-harvesting device, so what that basically means is that the CT clamp uh, powers the energy manager, so it doesn't require any external power. Another good feature, I should say, is that it does have the ability to connect a USB-C cable to it, um, which essentially what that allows you to do is, is boost the usable range or workable range 
So it allows you to boost the operating range of the energy manager um, so that it can cover a much greater distance. In this application, I'm going to try it without installing the USB-C cable and see if the, if the charger can connect to the energy manager over the distance we have. just to put a cable tie around this just to tidy it up a little bit and then in the user manual they advise to cable tie this to the main in incoming tails which basically just amplifies the, uh, the signal the installer app connects to the charge point via Bluetooth. The initial pairing procedure is done when the energy manager is right next to the device. You can then carry on and go and install it. Uh, and provided that the signal is within range, it can just connect automatically and it will start immediately giving you some data on how much the property is drawing. So in the installer menu, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom under smart home setup, You can see that the energy manager, which has already been paired, is connected to the charge point. If I click into that, it's reading it just uh, two bars out of four, so um, I'm absolutely, I have no concerns about that dropping out. You can see with the installation, there's, you know, there are some thick walls, but there's not much in the way of uh, um, obstructions between the charge point and the, uh, the mains where the energy manager is installed. You can see here that the current is recording in minus figures, so minus 23 amps at the moment. Ease of installation, so it just allows installers to reverse the reading. So yeah, really, really useful. The option at the bottom for home load balancing. By clicking into here, you've got the ability, ability to change the, uh, the home fuse rating. This property is fed by overhead power cables and the fuse size has been confirmed at being 60 amps. So using this slider here, I, I can reduce that to 60 amps and then I can save that. So there is also a fail-safe rating. So in the event of uh, a load balancing system failure whereby the charge point uh, can no longer communicate with the energy manager, you can set a fail-safe rating, which basically just ensures that under no circumstances could that maximum fuse size uh, be exceeded. It's set by default uh, at eight amps, which I'm, I'm happy with. That's pretty much it, I guess.